I can't believe I'm wearing a flannel and a beanie at the same time. All I need is my glasses on and I just look like the biggest hipster of all time. Oh, I'm recording. <clears throat> what is up everybody? Peter McKinnon here, uh, Walmart edition. In this video, I'll be showing you all my entire camera collection. I've been dreading this video for the longest time. I knew it was inevitable, but man, is this going to be one painful video. Let me start off by saying that I have about 50 working cameras. Yes, working cameras, 50. I just have an absurd amount of cameras and I am going to show them all to you. However, I will be breaking them up into categories, point and shoots, SLRs, rangefinders, you get the point. And I'm also not gonna spend too much time talking about each camera. I'm probably gonna say a few words about each of them and maybe show a few picture samples for some of them. Without any further ado, let's get into this mess. Oh God, where should I where should I begin? Uh, SLRs, point and shoots, I think point and shoots. I can't believe I'm wearing a flannel. We're gonna start off with my point and shoot collection. <laughs> Where should I begin? Starting off small, we have the Olympus MGU here. Had this camera for about three years, shot hundreds of rolls through it, and I just love this little guy. Beautifully small, comes with a 35 millimeter 3.5 lens, which is extremely sharp, and yeah, great camera. Next up here, we have the Canon SureShot Tele. This comes with a 40 to 70 millimeter lens, 2.8. I paid about five bucks for this camera at a thrift shop, and it is an awesome camera. Next up, we have a Pentax IQ Zoom. The Pentax IQ Zoom point and shoots are a great line of cameras. This is the IQ Zoom 60R, to be exact. Great little point and shoot. However, this camera stands out because it does have a double exposure feature, which you don't often see on point and shoots. So this camera, Great little guy. Here we have a Minolta uh, AF 101R. I never shot this camera, never will. Uh, I'm sure it's a great camera. I just, yeah, yeah, next. Next up we have what used to be a Samsung point and shoot. However, it did suffer a horrible accident. Uh, it, it, it's just all gold now. Um, it still works, flash works, the shutter fires, everything. Right over here we have the Minolta Talker. I actually dedicated an entire video to this camera. All you need to know is that this camera talks and that you should really go watch that video. Link down below in the description. Here we have the Canon AS6. This is a underwater point and shoot camera that floats, which is pretty cool. This camera is great for the pool or the beach, you know, back when those things used to be open, you know, nowadays they tend to be closed. So this camera is completely obsolete, but man, do I miss it. Right over here we have the Canon Snappy 50. I don't know about you, but this really reminds me of the 1980s. Um, I was born in the 90s, but it reminds me of the 1980s. I mean, look at this thing. This thing is just a huge rectangle, and I've shot a few rolls through this thing. It's pretty good. Right here we have a uh, Ryko Mirai 105. This is one clunky point and shoot. I don't know what Ryko was thinking about when they made this big ass point and shoot, but man, is it huge, clunky, and just annoying. I think I shot one road through this thing. However, it sadly did not survive. It died on the way to the hospital. Um, so yeah, I guess I really don't know if this is a good camera or not, but it is huge. And yes, it does have a Ramones sticker on it, which is pretty cool. Last but not least, we have the Yashica T4. <clears throat> yeah, last but not least, we have the Yashica T4. Uh, not much to say here. You guys probably heard about this camera. It is definitely the most hype beast camera that I have, I think. 35 millimeter, 3.5, Carl's Ice lens. You get the deal. I don't want to say too much about this camera because it is just uh, too well known. Um, I will say though, it, it, this, this, this thing can really take a beating. <laughs> I've dropped it, tossed it, uh, stepped on it once, and it is it, it's still working somehow. I don't have a I don't have a battery in it right now, but uh, you can believe me, this thing does work. So uh, yeah, that uh, Yashica T4. All right, time to showcase my SLRs, which means gotta wear a denim jacket. Why? I don't know. All right, starting off my SLR list, we have the Canon A1. Had this camera for about 
two years, I think. It's not exactly perfect. Uh, it's missing the battery door, for example. That's why I have a piece of tape there. No, it wasn't for hipster points. It was to, you know, uh, protect my battery. But despite its rough looks, it's really a great camera. And yeah. My next camera on the list is a Canon AE-1 program. I don't have it with me because I lend it to a friend. So I'll probably insert footage somewhere around here. This camera is very special to me because it is one of my first cameras ever and it will always have a special place in my heart. Next up here we have the Fujika ST705. The highest shutter speed on this camera is 1 1500th of a second. Yes, not 1000, not 2000. 1500th of a second, which is an odd shutter speed. Weird little camera and yes, it is a Fujika. Fujika Fujifilm. This is basically the, the grandfather of all the XT series, the X100 series. All of the overpriced uh, cameras that I really want to own but I can't afford. Yeah, Fuji SC705. Oh, this thing. This is a Yashica FX2. Nothing special about this camera. This is just a uh, typical SLR. I think I shot one roll through this camera. <laughs> Don't plan on shooting it again. Um, nothing against this camera. Uh, from the results I've seen, it's not a bad camera. Here we have the Kodak Retina Reflex S. I've actually dedicated an entire video to this camera. I absolutely love the quality of pictures this thing produces. This lens is super sharp. I wish you could detach it from the camera, but you can't. All I'm gonna say is go watch the video that I made on this camera. Great little thing. Here we have the Pentax ME. This little guy is smaller than my hand, which is the reason why I love it. It also houses one of my favorite lenses of all time, the 50 millimeter 1.7 pancake lens. I mean, look how tiny this little guy is. I mean, for the quality it produces, it is just an amazing, amazing lens. Definitely the smallest SLR in my collection, and I just love this camera to death. Next up here we have the Pentax ZX7. Nothing special about this camera. Uh, it's essentially an, an oversized point shoot, if you ask me, but it has a mirror, so it's technically an SLR. I shot a few rolls through this thing, and eh, it's not bad. I think I paid 20 bucks for this thing, and I honestly wouldn't pay more, so yeah. Oh god. All right, here we have the uh, Exa Ihagi Dresden camera. I don't know if I pronounced that right or if I said it in the correct order, but yeah, this is a, an EXA camera. Waist level finder, manual focus. The high shutter speed on this camera is 150. Yes, 1 150th of a second. Uh, yeah, I think I shot two rolls through this thing. The lens is pretty sharp. However, it is not user friendly. You would think this would be a cool camera just by its looks, but uh, it is a pain to use. And I paid 80 bucks for this thing. I really wish I could have those 80 bucks back. All right, so here we have my Nikon F. This, <laughs> I love this thing. I've had this camera for about over a year already, and man, do I love this thing to death. I will probably dedicate an entire video to this camera. I probably shot over 100 rolls through this thing already. Um, all manual, no battery needed, and just a beast. Lastly, we have the Nikon F2. I only shot like three rolls through it. Uh, I don't want to be too harsh, but I don't like this camera. I don't know what it is about it. This by all means is a lot more superior to the uh, original Nikon F. The high shutter speed is one two thousandth of a second. It has a working light meter on the little prism finder here. A lot better than my Nikon F, but for whatever reason, I just prefer my Nikon F over this thing. I mean, again, I shot like two rolls through this thing versus my Nikon F, I shot uh, a lot. Great camera, nothing against it. it, it just, it's just not for me. Why am I changing outfits on every new category? This is, this is ridiculous. So starting off here, we have the Canonet QL17. This is definitely my favorite rangefinder of all time. Yes, it rattles. Unfortunately, this camera is broken. I do plan on getting another model sooner or later. I shot dozens and dozens of rolls through this camera and I just can't praise this enough. Uh, great little camera. Here we have a Minolta Hymatic F. This is a tiny, tiny little guy. Everything on this camera is actually automatic aside from the focusing and you could also choose your ISO here. If you've never shot a rangefinder before and you want to know what it's like, uh, I definitely do recommend this camera. It's simple, it's small, and it shouldn't be too expensive. 
Okay, so here we have a Voigtlander Prominent. You probably never heard of this camera. It comes with a Voigtlander Ultron 50mm f2 lens, which I gotta say is uh, extremely sharp. I think I shot about two rolls with this camera. I do plan on shooting some more. I might even dedicate a video to this camera because I cannot find a single video on this camera on YouTube that that's in English at least. And finally we have Argus C3. Yep, we just went from a white lander to an Argus. Uh, yeah, this camera is known as the Brick. It's really not that great of a camera when it comes to picture quality. Um, it, I just find it fun to use, honestly, because it is a challenge to use, and I just appreciate it for the pain that it is. Okay, so before we move on to my medium format collection, I do want to share my collection of weird cameras. First, we're going to start off with this Kodak Avantix T550 APS film camera. That was a mouthful. Yes, APS film camera. No, not APS-C for you digital weirdos. This is an APS film that has uh, been expired for I don't know how long. Um, never shot it, never will. Move on. Here we have a Bell & Howell uh, focus free camera. Uh, yeah, I think I paid a dollar for this little camera. Um, and that's exactly what this is worth. Here we have another little uh, plastic camera with a plastic lens. I think I've shot about two rolls through this thing and I really love to just mount a huge flash on top. Just dwarfs this little camera and I just have fun with this camera. All right, here we have a Holga 135. What's cool about this camera is that you can release the shutter as many times as you like without advancing the frame which really makes this a multi-exposure machine. Um, you can really make some weird stuff with this. I only shot one roll through this thing. I don't know if I'll ever shoot it again. I probably will. Yeah, a fun, hideous little camera. Here we have a Vivitar 600. Uh, this is my only 110 camera. I never shot 110 and probably will never shoot 110. Here we have an M68F. This is definitely a weird one. Um, doesn't have a viewfinder uh, unless you flip this little thing up then I guess it does have a viewfinder You press the shutter here you wind it on the bottom and also it has a hot shoot flash on the side of the camera Yes, right right here. Definitely a, a weird camera. Never shot it. Never will Ansco 1045ZF. I've shot this camera, however, uh, I only shot it with expired film, so I really can't judge it on how good it is or how bad it is. Um, yeah, I do like the way it looks though. It, it's a kind of nice, however, it's it's an Ansco. Here we have an actual reloadable disposable camera. Who would ever want to reload a disposable camera? I don't know, but I have one and it's good to have. Don't know why, but uh, we have the uh, 135 fashion camera, FM, yes, FM, like the Nikon FM, except it's not a Nikon. Not sure about the focal length, but it does say high lens, yes. Not high definition, not high quality, high lens. This camera is completely plastic. This is probably the cheapest plastic I've ever held in my hands. I could totally see this camera being sold at a dollar store. Yes, not a thrift store, a dollar store. Oh God, they just keep coming and coming. Here we have a pop cam. Uh, this is a uh, very strange camera. I think I paid about $5 for it on Amazon and I honestly wouldn't pay more than that for this. The idea behind this camera is that it takes uh, four little frames on a single 35 millimeter frame if that makes any sense i'll just show you an image sample so you know what i'm talking about and uh here we have the uh heterosexual version of this camera get it because this is a rainbow <laughs> please don't cancel me uh yeah nothing special about these cameras they're really not that great at all i do want to say though that the shutter sound for this camera is absolutely just here for yourself yeah, uh, whatever you do, don't get one of these. <laughs> Last, but definitely not the least, the juice box. All right, so starting off with my six by six cameras, here we have a Pearl River. I know what you're thinking. What the hell is a Pearl River? This is basically a uh, 
the Shika Mat 124 knockoff. What's really, really cool about this camera is that it is dual format. It takes 6x6 and 6x5, which is pretty cool for the TLR. And honestly, if you're looking into getting into medium format and you want to start with a uh, TLR, this is definitely not a bad option. Here we have a Ciroflex. The lens on this camera is extremely sharp. One of the sharpest photos I've ever taken was taken with this camera. And honestly, I think I paid about $25 for this camera. I mean, it was broken when I bought it, but I managed to fix it. It's really not that difficult. Great little TLR if you never shot medium format, great little beginner camera. Here we have an Argo Flex 75. This is a 620 6x6 camera. Shot two rolls with it not that great especially because it's 620 and you really had to go out of your way to insert 120 film into here so uh yeah really not that great here we have my ishika mat 124g this was my first medium format camera ever i've had it for almost three years great picture quality uh easy to use has a working light meter which is amazing rollicord va type 1 i paid $50 for this camera and it came with a ton of accessories here we have the case for it that has the lens hood that's attached to this camera and it comes with a few set of filters here and here <laughs> here we have a rolly flash now the idea behind this is that you attach it to the lens somehow you can tell I use this camera a lot I don't even know how to here we go right I got it what <laughs> yeah this camera is something else so what's cool about this flash is that you uh pull out the little uh, uh whatever you call this thing you plug it into the camera and that's how it works right however when you're done using the flash you just simply roll up the cord here i mean how cool is that i did want to dedicate a proper video to this camera because it is really great uh comes with a ton of accessories and um, unfortunately I do plan on selling this. I just don't use it that often. It honestly collects dust. I've never even shot this flash. I do have flash cubes for this thing, which is why I do want to dedicate a video because I never shot flash cubes before or flash bulbs, is it? Yeah, flash bulbs. I'm honestly kind of nervous when it comes to shooting flash bulbs. I've never shot one before, but I imagine they kind of explode. So uh, on second thought, that actually sounds like fun explosions <laughs> sign me up last but not least we have my Rolleiflex e type 2 this oh god where do i even begin this is probably my favorite camera of my entire collection i'm pretty sure i shot over 100 rolls through this thing and i think it's been about a year since i bought it i will definitely dedicate an entire video to this camera in the future so i don't want to say too much but favorite camera of all time Okay, this camera I definitely don't know the name of. Imperial Mark 7 Flash. <laughs> yeah, this is basically a 620 Holga. Nothing much to this camera. The shutter release is right here. The advanced wind is up here. And that's pretty much all there is to this camera. And speaking of a Holga, here we have my Holga box. <laughs> I actually do have a Holga camera. I just lent it off to our friend, so I obviously don't have it with me. So, uh, cool box though. Okay, so here we have the gigantic RB67. This camera needs no introduction. I'm sure you've all heard of it. Very heavy camera. I have the waist level finder and this eye level viewfinder that really just makes the camera a lot heavier and I barely use this thing. I basically have this just for fun. I have a 90 millimeter 3.8 lens on this toaster oven sized camera. Pretty great. Moving on to my 6x9 cameras, here we have a number one Kodak Junior. Uh, yeah, this camera is 100 years old and it still works somehow. It does smell uh, pretty bad, so I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna put it away now. Next up here, we have a Voigtlander Bessel 1. This is a cool little camera. It's a Voigtlander, so you can't really go wrong with a Voigtlander. Not only does this camera look cool, but the picture quality that it produces is pretty great. Finally, we have the Mosca 5. This is a Russian made camera that I actually dedicated an entire video on so I don't really want to say too much. You should definitely go watch that video. But I want to say I do want to make a comparison video between these two. Voigtlander Bessa versus the Mosca 5. A rangefinder camera versus a waist level finder. A German made camera versus a Soviet made camera. The Germans versus the Russian. 
questions. On second thought, uh, we all know the Russians win at the end, so never mind. So this is my uh, first and only 4x5 camera. We have a Graflex Crown Graphic. I've got this camera about six months ago, I believe, and I'm still kind of learning how to use it, as you can see. I'm still a beginner when it comes to 4x5, so I don't want to say too much. I probably will dedicate an entire video to this camera and the whole 4x5 process. I have the 135mm 4.7 lens on this camera. And yeah, I think I paid about 150 bucks for this camera, which is uh, pretty good considering it's a 4x5. All right, so here we have my Polaroid collection. I must say, I don't really shoot Polaroid all that much. I think I only ever shot a total of three packs. I mean, nothing against Polaroids. It's just the film is uh, way too expensive for me. And the picture quality isn't the greatest, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, these are all my Polaroids. So I have a few autofocus ones. Both of these are autofocus. This is the One Step SE autofocus. I don't know which one this is. Uh, this is the 640, which is pretty cool because it has a tripod socket on the bottom, which you never see in the Polaroid. And this one has a red stripe right here, which is uh, pretty cool. Now here we have my Instax cameras. This is the Instax Mini 90. This shoots Instax Mini. And this is my Instax Wide 300, which shoots Instax Wide. I really prefer Instax over Polaroid. The picture quality that you get from Instax is a lot better than the Polaroid, and it's also a lot cheaper, so. <laughs> now, my final film camera that I wanna share here is a Canon Zoom 518. This is my only Super 8 camera. I think I paid about $2 for this camera at a thrift shop and it's in perfect working condition. I don't have batteries in it right now, so I can't really prove that. <coughs> okay, so uh, a little warning, uh, trigger warning for my viewers. Uh, I'm about to show you my digital camera collection. <laughs> so starting off with the camera that I used to film all of my videos with, this is the Fujifilm X-T20. I paid $900 for this camera about two years ago. And man, is this thing just a workhorse and a half. I think the X-T20 is gonna turn three years old soon if it hasn't already. I should probably upgrade, but I mean, until this thing explodes or disintegrates, uh, I'm still gonna use it. I only have the kit lens for this thing. It is a 16 to 50 millimeter lens, 3.5 to 5.6, but it is amazingly sharp and I really do love this camera. Um, I'm gonna mount it back to the tripod now. Next, we have the Fujifilm X100. I've actually dedicated an entire video to this camera, so I don't want to say too much about it. It is, though, the original X100 from 2011. Using this in 2020, it's still a great camera. The price for it is pretty great, especially after the X100V came out recently. Uh, yeah, great little guy. And while we're on the topic of old cameras, this is the Olympus Tough or the TG-1, I, I believe. I don't know what it's called. I just know it's old. This camera came out in 2012 or somewhere around that time, I think. It is a waterproof camera that I just really enjoy using. I already have mentioned that I own this Canon AS6, which is also waterproof, but to be fair, this thing eats film like you wouldn't believe, which is why I decided to get a digital waterproof camera. I actually picked this up for 25 bucks, and let me tell you, for $25, this is a great, Great camera, 12 megapixels, a lens that stops down to f2, full HD videos, uh, you name it. $25, I think I scored a very, very great camera here. Next up is my DJI Osmo Pocket. This is basically a camera on a stick. Uh, it's a little gimbal camera. It uh, helps you get steady footage. And I actually do use it to film a lot of my videos, honestly. I actually mount this little guy onto many cameras. First of all, I put this little bottom piece on the bottom, this piece has a little tripod socket. I take a little bracket thing that has uh, two screws on each side. I mount the little Osmo on one side here, and on the other side, put on the bottom of the camera. And there it is. It's successfully mounted to my rolly cord. Now, I could just walk around, take pictures, and have it uh, record video at the same time. Almost like mounting a GoPro on a camera, except this isn't a GoPro. 
This is more of a, uh, a, a gimbal. Uh, like I mentioned, a camera on a stick. Honestly, one of the best purchases I made in a long time. DJI Osmo Pocket, 100% uh, recommend it if you make videos. Next up here, we have a GoPro Hero 3. I tried to use this camera about a month ago and it wouldn't turn on, even though I left it charging all night. Pretty sure the battery is fried. I should probably get a new one, which I will probably not do, so. Similar to the GoPro, we have a CX active on action camera. This little guy cost me about $40. Honestly, I don't really use action cameras all that often anymore, so I don't really care for it. Moving on. Next up, we have the Fujifilm XP. This is another underwater camera. I think I paid $2 for this at a thrift store and man did I overpay because this is waterproof, shockproof, dustproof, freeze proof and quality proof because this camera is a piece of sh Next up here we have a Canon PowerShot A590S. Yes, it is a 8 megapixel camera. Uh, it has a optical viewfinder which I really like. And then right over here we have a HP PhotoSmart E337 5 megapixel camera. It also has an optical viewfinder, which I find intriguing. Have I shot either of these cameras? No. Why, why, why am I talking about these cameras? Yeah, uh, uh, potatoes. This is what they are. And finally, we have a Nikon Coolpix uh, S2230. The LCD screen on this camera is pretty big. I did lose the battery a while ago, and I'm not going to buy a replacement for it. Okay, it is now time for uh, my vintage camcorders. Okay, so here we have my entire vintage uh, camcorder collection. <laughs> I have uh, two of these things in the back. Uh, this is a sharp view cam camera. It's a high eight camera that's essentially, you know, a, a selfie camera because you can do this. Both of these, they're high eights. They're the same thing. They flip. Here I have my VHS-C cameras. These cameras take VHS compact tapes. That's what the C stands for in VHS-C. And they are just all clunky and I don't ever use these guys. So uh, yeah, moving along. And finally we have my little mini DV camcorder. This is the Canon ZR85 camcorder. It takes mini DV and it takes an SD card. It does have to be a two gigabyte SD card. If you put anything bigger than two gigabyte, this camera will not take it. I record both on the mini DV and the SD card and I just love this little guy. One, because it's small and compact. I mean, when you compare it to this thing. So I've been dreading this next part. Um, it is my uh, collection of uh, broken cameras. Earlier I said I had about 50 working cameras. Uh, yeah, working is a huge keyword because I have a few broken cameras to show you guys. For this part I'm going to have to move you guys a little further back and pull this table a little further that way. Let's, let's do that. And here they are. This is a... Uh, this is, uh, this is all my broken cameras. As you can see, this is why I moved the camera back because this uh, a whole set took up the entire table here. No, I don't have any more. Who do you think you are? Don't accuse me of things that Words cannot express my feeling of embarrassment right now. This is it. This is my pile of broken cameras. I like how the camera isn't focused on me, but on, on on this. That should really tell you how bad this is. <laughs> I have no idea how many cameras are on this table right now. So I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna go ahead and play this little montage of me showing you every single camera that's in this pile. All right, to start here, we have my dad's old Canon AE-1. Uh, this camera didn't work when I received it and it still doesn't work even though I tried to repair it a million times. As you can see, it does this which most Canon AE-1s have this problem for whatever reason. So yeah. Here we have a Yashica MF2. This camera still works technically, but it's missing the rewind button and opening the back is nearly impossible. Akfa Atoma 500. Uh, this camera never worked and I don't really care. Right over here, we have a Minolta XGSC. This camera worked completely fine and I sold it online. And when I was getting ready to pack this camera, 
I decided to give it a few tests and that's when I discovered that it, it, it stopped working for whatever reason. Literally overnight, this camera decided to turn itself into a brick, so. Right here we have a Minolta SRT 101. Not sure what's wrong with this camera, it just doesn't work for whatever reason, I don't know. Here we have another Minolta SRT 101. Uh, this one, oh, no, uh, no, no rewind button. That's, that's what's wrong with it. The Minolta XGM, um, missing bottom plate. I think that's what's wrong with this, oh, and a few parts. It's been gutted, somebody gutted it. Was it me? And here we have another Minolta SRT 200. This is another Minolta that decided to be uh, a brick. It just doesn't work no matter what I do. Here I have a Canon Net QL19. Uh, it rattles, it's missing the rewind button, and that's pretty much it. Here is what used to be an Instax camera of some sort. However, it uh, suffered an accident of some sort. And now it looks like this. A Voigtlander V-Tomatic 2, a Yashica TL, um, I don't know, an Agfa Colorflex, which has a detachable prism finder thing. Pretty cool, too bad it, it never worked. And here we have my dad's old AE-1. This wasn't my dad's old AE-1, this is just an old AE-1. However, this was my dad's old AE-1 that he used and gave it to me and never worked because all AE-1s do that. Nikon N2000, not sure what's wrong with it, but it is kind of ugly and I, I'm glad it doesn't work. I don't know what this is, um, but uh, it doesn't work. Oh, no rewind button. Canon Spirit, a red point shoot, looks good, too bad. It has a uh, corroded battery compartment that I tried so hard to fix, but can never uh, fix it. Canon AS6, yes, I have a fully working one and one that uh, doesn't work at all. An Olympus Stylus Zoom 70. This thing, oh, has my name on it. I guess that's what's wrong with it. Maybe that's why it broke. Uh, here we have a Canon E Spirit. Not sure what happened to the rest of the body, but uh, Canon E Spirit. I had it once. It worked perfectly fine once. I just don't know what happened. Here we have an Agfa folding medium format camera. I have no idea. Oh, but it says made in Germany. Here I have a Sony Handycam Video 8 CCTR94. Don't know what's wrong with it. Konica C35 rangefinder camera. Uh, back door doesn't open and the shutter doesn't fire. Fun. A Canon SureShot Joy. I believe this camera is just way too ugly to function. Sorry. Fujika AX-1, which clearly fell into a pot of gold, and it's also missing a rewind button. I like how that's a common theme. A Mamiya slash Secor 528TL um, uh, missing rewind button, and uh, the skin is peeling. However, I believe the shutter fires, but who's going to use this? Here I have what's left of a, a, a Fuji camera. I don't know which one exactly, but uh, I'm missing a few pieces. Here I have a Contaflex with a Carl Zeiss Tessar 2.8 45mm lens. Unfortunately, this camera decided to never work, therefore... Here we have a Pentax Mi Super. Uh, the back is missing, and the... Uh... Right here we have an Argus C44. Now this time, I have the rewind button. However, I am missing the advanced lever to this camera. Here we have a Pentax P30T. Uh, never worked, put a batteries in it. Has a rewind button, uh, just never worked. An Olympus D370. An Instax Mini 50S. This used to be a Ryko AF-5, however, for my Edochrome video, I uh, <clears throat> had to utilize it for uh, time travel. Here we have a Voigtlander Vito C with a red interior. Nice setup, however, the camera never worked. Surprise, surprise. Here we have a Kodak Autographic Junior, pretty big as you can see. Here we have another Kodak Autographic Junior, except this one uh, shrunk in the dryer. The Olympus Super Zoom 3000, great name, crappy camera. Uh, a 10X, a Terax, 10X, Terax. It's made in Germany. Next up, I have not one, not two, not three, but 
four Polaroid land cameras. Here we have another Sony Handycam that uh, uh, suffered a great tragedy. A Minolta Master C516. Um, yeah, I don't know. Here we have a Polaroid land camera model J66. This is an oversized camera. You know, this really shouldn't exist. We have an Akva Prontor 2 with uh, a 35 mm I have not one, not two, but three Sony Mavicas. For those of you who don't know, these are the cameras that take floppy disks uh, instead of SD cards or film. Floppy disks. A sharp view cam that is uh, broken. Don't know what happened to it. There's a slight rattle to it. A rather large Sony CCD Handycam. <laughs> I have no idea what happened to it. A Nikon Light Touch Zoom 120. Polaroid Joy Cam. This camera, I actually got my hands on the Polaroid Joy Cam pack that I ran through this camera and this little guy ate all of it. The shutter on this camera does not work and I wish I knew that before I spent money on that Polaroid pack. A Canon SureShot Telemax. This camera actually worked perfectly fine until one day it just kicked over and died. Here we have a uh, good looking Nikon FE. Don't know what's wrong with it, but it's good looking. Akfa Optima 2S, it's green. Yushika L, this is a beautiful point and shoot that uh, never worked, but hopefully one day I'll fix it. Here we have an Argus C3 that is missing a lens and a sole. This is a potty mouth point and shoot. And finally, here we have a uh, Fujika ST605N. It's missing the rewind lever. You know the deal. I don't know about you guys, but I will not walk around with this on me. Um, I just can't. Can't look ridiculous. So yeah, that was my whole camera collection. I want to start by saying that this isn't the most cameras I've ever owned. I actually once counted up to 80 working cameras, and I, I did have a lot more broken cameras. I've managed to sell off a lot of working cameras and as for the broken cameras that I used to have a lot were sold for parts and pieces. Some of them I actually managed to repair so they worked again and some of them I actually ended up throwing away in the trash. The total amount of cameras that I've owned I don't even want to think about it. I can say with confidence that it's about 200 plus cameras at least. But yeah I guess moral of the story here uh, don't own more than 10 cameras let me know down below in the comments if you have any cameras that i have and also let me know what your favorite camera is i know it's not an easy decision to make especially if you own a lot of cameras like me i think i'm gonna go with the roliflex here as being my favorite camera out of my unlawful amount of cameras that i have uh this one really stands out and i i just love it to death hope you enjoyed the video leave a like subscribe if you're new here and until next time